Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> so you may wonder, we talk about these rocks in the northern East Humboldt Ranger. Here we're on Clover Hill, coming from depths as great as 35 kilometers. And you may be wondering, how could we possibly know something? What could be somehow in the rock that could tell you the depth or the temperature that it was at? And uh, the secret is in the minerals. Minerals are really a wondrous little kind of a uh, zip drives of the geologic history of the rocks. And in this case, the, uh, the story of the pressures and the temperatures that they formed at is captured by the chemical composition of some minerals. So uh, you really, we wouldn't know what pressure and temperature these rocks were at and therefore wouldn't know what depth they formed in the crust unless you had uh, the right rock. So a lot of these rocks around here, are the wrong kind of rock. They're made entirely of quartz and whatever pressure and temperature they're at, they're, the rock is gonna be made out of quartz. But I found one here that's dark. It might look ugly to you, but it's beautiful to me. Um, rock with these nice shiny micas in it. And not only that, but there's a pretty blue mineral when you look closely called kyanite. Uh, when you slice, there's tiny little red minerals called garnets. Uh, the locals around here, sometimes they get large and old timers used to call them ruby garnets and hence the name ruby range. The, um, in addition to the uh, garnets, there are um, black flaky minerals, biotite. Um, there's a mineral, sometimes the kyanite, the blue mineral, will have these little fibers of solemnite on it. And all those minerals are sensitive to the pressure and temperature at which they form. So some, the, um, the kyanite and solemnite are actually exactly the same composition, kind of like diamond and, um, and graphite are both made out of, of, of carbon. But the kyanite and the solemnite are, the kyanite is a, a higher pressure version that you get the, 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 the same elements rearrange themselves into a denser form at higher pressure, and that's the kyanite. And so you know if you have kyanite in a rock, you're above a certain pressure at any given temperature. Some minerals, however, have a kind of a more complex story. It's not so much the individual mineral as the geochemistry, the chemical components um, exchanging between that mineral and its neighbors. So, for example, the amount of iron that goes into garnet versus biotite when they're right next to each other changes as a function of the temperature. And this has been shown experimentally that same garnet also has calcium in it. And the partitioning or the exchange of calcium between the garnet and the, uh, the, its neighboring plagioclase crystals um, can give you uh, uh, important controls on the pressure at which the rocks were. So we have a number of things going on in this kind of complex rock that ultimately record its pressure. And so, um, several years ago, a scientist, uh, Kip Hodges is, was his name, uh, collected these and studied them, and he got pressures as high as 10 kilobars um, for these rocks. And not only that, but as the minerals grew, they changed in composition, and so he was able to trace out a path, a, a, a sequence of changes in pressure and temperature that showed that these rocks went from a kyanite um, grade metamorphism into solemnite. So you have these little feathers of solemnite on the kyanite. The temperature increased and at the same time, the pressure was going down. What could that mean? The rocks, even as they were heating, were somehow being brought closer to the surface. And so that's the kind of really amazing stories that you can get out of looking at something in incredible detail. And that's a lot of the story of geology, is that these little clues, these little hints, can lead 
to really much kind of grander stories and uh, you know a, a, a kind of amazing vision of how the earth has evolved through time and how ultimately Clover Hill formed and how it got uplifted to the earth's surface.